Welcome to Art Glass, a hidden gem nestled on the stunning coast of Northern Ireland. In this video, we will explore its rich history, vibrant culture, and the all things that make this coastal town so unique. In the words of James McCabe Napier, turn to the little town of Art Glass in the barony of Lakeel, easternmost tip of County Down. It is as old as the hills that surround it. It is steeped in the very cauldron of antiquity, ancient home of wandering tribes and medieval clans. We begin our journey at Ardglass Marina. It can berth up to 80 vessels and provide safe harbour for those wishing to travel further around the coast into Strangford Lock and beyond. Ardglass has such ancient origins. This town has a history that dates back thousands of years. Even the remnants of Ardglass Castle perched dramatically on the cliffs overlooking the sea, are a testament to its medieval past. Ardglass's history is deeply intertwined with the sea. For generations the town has thrived on the bounty of the Irish Sea, making it a hub for fishing and maritime trade, and one of three largest fishing ports in Northern Ireland today. Ardglass was one of the busiest ports in the whole of Ulster and the centre of Anglo-Norman network of fortifications. Its position on the Lakeel Peninsula made it of strategic importance for defence, for transport and communication, both with England, Scotland and the Norman-controlled area around Dublin, known as the Pale. Throughout the village of Ardglass, ruins of castles and of forts and tower houses abound. Coming into view is Art Glath Bathing House. The little tower was built in the 19th century for Victorian ladies who wished to keep their modesty whilst going for a swim. The little tower was the brainchild of local landowner William Ogilvie, who in his regeneration of the harbour in the town wished to draw more visitors. Perched above the harbour is King's Castle. King John, suspicious of the prospering of knights such as John de Courcy, arrived here in 1210 and evicted those that once lived there. When first constructed, there were two castles on this lofty site, King's Castle and Queen's Castle. 
However, in the 1820s, Queen's Castle was undermined and collapsed. King's Castle was renovated and temporarily used as an army barracks and later a residence. Today, it is a nursing home. Throughout the turbulent centuries, our glass was often the scene of bitter fighting and prolonged sieges and changed hands many times. Even the invasion of Edward the Bruce in the 14th century left the towns and villages of Lakeel devastated. In 1433, our glass was sacked and its Anglo-Norman inhabitants killed or driven out. In the 15th century, an invasion from Scotland aided by the local McGuinness clan, led many Scots to settle in the peninsula. Jordan's castle as we see here, and Margaret's castle around the corner, were constructed around this time. From 1599 to 1601, Jordan's castle was besieged. The constable, Simon Jordan, and his men were finally relieved on the 17th of June 1601 by Lord Deputy Mountjoy. In 1911, Jordan's castle was purchased by a Belfast historian, Francis Joseph Baker. As said by James Napier, Art glass has always been a happy hunting ground for archaeologists on account of its ancient history, and for none more so than the late F.J. Baker. He purchased the castle, repaired the old fortress, furnished it with period pieces, and proceeded to live in it in his leisure hours. Slowly we wind our way around the town, heading towards Margaret's Castle and to our glass golf course, the oldest clubhouse in the world. Situated on Castle Place are the remains of Margaret's Castle. This was another fortification built to safeguard the harbour and the local gentry. Only two floors remain and part of a spiral staircase. Today it is adjacent to a local B&B. Situated beside our glass castle are the ruins of another defensive tower house, Cowd Castle. Another small square two-storey building recorded as one of the flanking towers of Newark. In 1430, Art Glass was granted a royal charter. The importance of Art Glass as a fishing port and centre of trade and commerce is demonstrated by this building, Newark, or New Work, subsequently known as Art Glass Castle and currently today Art Glass Clubhouse.
New work was constructed by a group of London merchants who wanted to consolidate their position in the main port of Anglo-Norman Ulster. Traditionally, the Irish exported wool, linen, beef, hides and cereals, while importing wine, iron and luxury goods. The road at Ardglass Castle is believed to be the oldest trading street in Ireland. As said by Samuel Lewis in 1837, the port of Ardglass appears to have been in a flourishing condition from a very early period. A trading company from London settled here in the reign of Henry IV, and in the reign of Henry VI it had an extensive foreign trade and was superior to any other port in the province of Ulster. Now let's make our way around to the harbour and to that industry, the fishing industry, so intertwined with the history of hard glass. Before leaving the site of the towers, one cannot forget on the outskirts of the town is Isabel's Tower. In 1851, Aubrey de Vere Beauclerc, grandson of William Ogilvy, built the stone tower on a local hill called the Ward. This was to help his daughter recuperate as she was suffering from tuberculosis. It is known as Isabel's Tower. Ardglass has been a fishing port for more than 2,000 years. The harbour is one of those that is fully accessible no matter what the tide and still hosts many fish processing factories to this very day. Today the fishing industry remains a vital part of Ardglass's culture and the local catch, including world famous Ardglass herring, is celebrated not just for its taste but for the town's enduring connection to the sea. Let me quote from the Ordnance Survey Memoirs of 1835. In 1810 there were not more than three or four houses of two storeys high in the whole village, the population living in low wretched cottages and not exceeding 150 souls at most. Since that time streets of new and good houses which are from three to four storeys high have been built and fitted for the accommodation of people in a respectable rank of life. Elegant baths have also been erected by the late William Ogilvy Esquire, in consequence of which and the comfortable lodgings to be had on easy terms. The village has become a place of fashionable resort for the valetitarians and others during the summer months.
Finally we bid our fond farewell to our glass, where history and culture are as deep and enduring as the sea itself. Day. 